Hey guys, it's Caitlin and I am back again for three weeks in a row. But anyway, let's get straight into the video. So for this week, I'm going to be showing you guys all of the TBR books on my bookshelves because if I had to go through every single book that I want to read, that is going to take an incredibly long time. But I do actually have quite a few on my shelves because even though I'm supposed to be stopping buying books, it's not happening. So all of the books that I have to read that are on these shelves here, I'm going to be showing you guys and it might take a little bit of time, so stick around. Yeah, I don't know if I've actually mentioned it before, but the way that I decide what book I read next is normally by a little bucket kind of thing. This is my little bucket kind of thing. So inside here, I've just got a bunch of post-it notes and on each post-it note is one of the books on this shelf or this one that I haven't read yet. So normally I just kind of draw one out and do that, but it was getting a little bit crazy trying to have to write down every single new book that I was buying and everything. So what I did, I just made a Word document, I did the dot points as numbers, and I go up to my brother and I just say, pick a number between one and so and so. He picks, I read, it's a good system. I'll just be giving some very vague descriptions off of these books since there are quite a few to get through. There's actually 50 books on this shelf that I haven't read yet and that's not including series, that's only including the first book in the series. Backlash by Sarah Dara Lippman. This book is about cyberbullying and about how what goes on on Facebook can really affect what happens in reality and in someone's life. And this thing was incredibly emotional and really like bullying heavy so I don't know, I'm kind of hesitant to go into this one because of that reason. What Waits in the Woods by Kieran Scott. So basically this group goes out camping in the forest and they lose half of their food supply because they're just stupid. And then one of the main girls literally trips over a dead body and what waits in the woods? The killer waits in the woods because what kind of book would it be if she tripped over a dead body and the killer wasn't there trying to turn her into a new one? So yay. Oh yeah, Audrey by Tucker Shaw. All I really know about this book is that the main girl is obsessed with Audrey Hepburn and that was one of the main reasons that I actually picked this up because best friend Lucy, she's been on this channel before, is obsessed with Audrey Hepburn as well. We bought this book at around the same time. She's read this book and she said that it wasn't as good as she thought it was going to be so for that reason alone I haven't read it yet but I will be getting to it soon so I can kind of make up my own opinion. My own opinion on that. The Scorpio Trials by Maggie Stevada, and I honestly have no idea what this book is about, so I can't really tell you anything. I'll just read you one of the sentences off the back. That was what actually got me to buy this book in the first place, and it just says, it is the first day of November, and so today someone will die, and I've gone. Okay, sounds interesting. Inhuman by Cat Falls. All I really know about this book is that it's another one of those biological disaster kind of novels. You've got civilization and then a massive wall and then you've got the feral zone. And she's just thinking, why the hell would anyone ever decide to go into the feral zone? Because that's just stupid. But of course, it wouldn't really be a novel if she didn't go into the feral zone herself because someone close to her went into that zone, so. Yes. Incarceron by Catherine Fisher. I also have absolutely no idea what this book is about. Um, I Am Number Four by Pitticus Law, and this is actually one of the best blurbs that I've ever read on the inside of the book. So I'm just going to read this to you instead of trying to kind of do my own thing because I don't want to ruin like what I just read. It just says, Nine of us came here. We look like you, we talk like you, we live among you, but we are not you. We can do things you dream of doing. We have powers you dream of having. We are stronger and faster than anything you have ever seen. We are the superheroes you worship in movies and comic books, but we are real. Our plan was to grow and train and become strong and become one and fight them. But they found us and started hunting us first. Now all of us are running, spending our lives in shadows, in places where no one would look, blending in. We have lived among you without you knowing, but they know. They caught number one in Malaysia, number two in England, and number three in Kenya. They killed them all. I am number four. I am next. So, 
<laughs> Glow by Amy Kathleen Ryan, and once again, I know absolutely nothing. A violent battle separates two young lovers on a ship bound for Earth. Okay. Winger by Andrew Smith, and if you watch my book haul you realise that I have no idea how to describe what this book is about. A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. I did buy this book because of the infernal devices. Well, my friend bought it for me. But as soon as we read that and we saw that Tessa was like obsessed with it, we're just like, mm, we need to read that. And I still haven't. Masquerade by Kylie Fornasia. All I know is that this is about a masquerade set in 1750 and it just sounds like, it sounds so interesting. I just really like books that are kind of set in this era because they're like there's always some really interesting plot going on and something that's just completely out of the blue. North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell. I only picked this up because I remember Lucy said that she read it and she liked it. And uh, now that I think about it, a lot of my book recommendations actually come from Lucy, so... A Little Something Different by Sandy Hall. Now, I picked this one up because it sounds like such a cutesy, like, contemporary kind of novel. It's basically just about two characters, Leah and Gabe, and everyone can see that they're perfect for each other, and everyone is watching them is like as if their life is some kind of reality show and just shipping them so hard and we're gonna see if they actually do get together in the end because they're interested in the same things and even the bus driver likes to know what's going on in their lives and if they're dating yet so I haven't even read it and I already ship it like get together we Were Liars by E. Lockhart. I said in my book haul as well that I have absolutely no idea what this book is about. The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. I watched this movie when it came out and I bawled my eyes out so hard and the only reason I haven't gotten around to reading it yet is because I'm not sure if I'm prepared to feel so emotional over this book again because it took me so long to get over it and over the end of it so I'm like, mm. okay. Okay, I need to brace myself before I read this, so if anyone has any bracing techniques, let me know, please. The Light Between Oceans by M. L. Stedman. I haven't seen this movie yet either, but my aunt read the book and she said that it made her cry so much, so I really want to get into this now. That a boat washes up on a shore with a dead man inside as well as a small child, and the two main characters, the husband and wife, have to figure out whether they're going to keep the child, and I'm pretty sure they do and they raise it as their own until the mother of that child actually figures out that her baby is still alive and then all hell breaks loose. Perfume by Patrick Suskind. I did get given this by my literature teacher when I was in year 11 and it's actually my year 12 literature teacher's favourite novel or at least one of them and she said that it will completely ruin you in like the way that you see things and the way that you're like you just perceive your sense of smell basically. I'm hesitant but she said that it's amazing nonetheless so I do but I don't and I'm like ah. Next up two books that I've got no idea what they're about again but what's new? We've got The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern and The Time Traveler's Wife by Audrey Niffenegger. Next we have a trilogy and that is the Across the Universe trilogy. So we've got Across the Universe, A Million Suns and then Shades of Earth. Uh, now I have read this one but I read it a couple of years ago and all I remember is that the main character's name is Amy. They are on this big vessel boat kind of thing on the way to a new planet when she wakes up the victim of an attempted murder 50 years before they're scheduled to arrive. I don't know where it went but it's supposed to be Angels and Demons by Dan Brown but all I have is the Da Vinci Code so yay. Um, if you don't know what this series is about it's just about this guy named Robert Langdon and everything to do with the Illuminati. Vague but yep. Next we have Poison Study by Maria V. Snyder. I have read this. I've actually read the first three and a half books in this series but I stopped reading it because as soon as I got to Shadow Study I just kind of got a bit sidetracked and I never actually ended up finishing it. All I really remember about this book is that the main character Yelena Zaltana she had murdered someone but instead of getting sentenced to death it's between that or becoming a poison tester kind of thing for this really important guy. Now, it says on the blog that she starts to have feelings for her captor, Valek, and I know that he is apparently young. He is around her age, a little bit older, 
But for some reason, I always pictured him as that Duke from Frozen, the one with the toupee. So now every time I read this book, I'm thinking you're a really old guy. No. The Maze Runner by James Dashner. If you don't know what this is about, which is pretty highly unlikely, I'm guessing, I did give a very bad summary of it in my book haul, so if you haven't seen that, go watch that to find it out. Truth Witch by Susan Dennard, and I have absolutely no idea what this is about. Lucy bought it for me for Christmas the other year, and I still haven't read it. Next we've got three books that I'll probably never end up reading, but I bought them all from the Salvos because everyone says that they're amazing, so we can hope. We've got Animal Farm by George Orwell, The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger, and Tess of the Dubervilles by Thomas Hardy. Amulet by Kazu Kubishi. I know that I don't know how to say that last name. And this is the only graphic novel that I've ever actually bought myself because it just, it seems so interesting and I've already forgotten what it's about. Next we have Illuminae by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. I have not read this yet even though I got it probably like a year or two ago. Way Down Dark by J.P. Smythe. I did do a summary of this in my second last book haul. Uh, this is one of the only books that I own that's actually set in Australia. And it is another one of those where um, Earth is dying. So... Zeros by Scott Westerfeld, Margot Lanigan and Deborah Biancotti. I have no idea what this book is about. I do know that book two is out at the moment. So on the back it just says one bag of stolen drug money, one bungled bank robbery, six teen teenagers, six unique powers, and one action-packed week. So these teens have powers that says that they don't set them apart, though it gets them labelled zeros. Panic by Lauren Oliver. Basically, I know that this is similar to The Hunger Games, just in its concept. It's a game played only by the desperate, so I think this one is more voluntary than you kind of just get picked out for your district and like... <laughs> there is a cash prize for this one, so a lot of people enter thinking that they can win it. One girl's like, oh my god, I'll never enter, and the other guy's like, yeah, I'm totally gonna win this thing. It sounds interesting. Next up, can you guess? Two more books that I have no idea what they're about. The first one is The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon, and the second one is Game Board of the Gods by Rochelle Mead. Next we have Echo Boy by Matt Haig. So all I really know about this book is that there are two characters. You've got Audrey, and she She's just a regular human boy and then you've got Daniel and he's an echo and they're not supposed to feel any real feelings they're just supposed to be emotionless but he has a feeling for Audrey one that he was never programmed to have and one that he cannot explain next we have the Raven boys by Maggie Stevarda I know it's been out for a very long time and I know that a lot of people love it quite a few of my friends have read this as well and they said they really enjoyed it so I do want to get on this bandwagon pretty soon and then we also have Uglies by Scott Westerfeld. So basically all I know about this one is that you're born ugly and then you get this like thing that turns you not ugly and this one girl was always like oh my god yeah like I want to be pretty or something and then she doesn't. They get this procedure when they turn 16 the main character's name is Tally and she's always just like oh my god I can't wait to be pretty like yay. But then her new friend Shay is just kind of she thinks the whole getting pretty thing is pretty sketchy. Um so when she starts to delve into everything she realizes that it is pretty sketchy. We've got The Knife of Never Letting Go by Patrick Ness. Also by Patrick Ness we have The Rest of Us Just Live Here and then by Karen Healy we have When We Wake. So basically what When We Wake is about our 16 year old Tegan she was loving her life and everything and then she wakes up a hundred years later in this secure government facility because she is the first person to be successfully cryonically frozen and successfully revived and she's an instant celebrity and she's all just like all I want is my life back like why so first up we've got Tiger's Curse by Colleen Hook Carrier of the Mark by Leigh Fallon The Killer Bulls by Gemma Malley Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Riggs Splintered by A.G. Howard Breathe Annie Breathe by Miranda Keneally Shattered Souls by Mary Lindsay, A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness, My Name is Rapunzel by K.C. Hilton, and then the last one is Rumble by Ellen Hopkins. 
Alrighty, now sorry about that being so long and possibly even so boring. I do have some really hopefully exciting videos planned and they will be coming up soon. I just need another person to help me film them because I can't really do them by myself. But anyway, you'll probably be seeing Lucy coming up next in quite a few of these upcoming videos. But yeah. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and just hit that button down below if you want to see more videos with me or with any of my friends. And yeah, I never know how to end my videos and I'm never going to. I'll see you next time, guys.